Hello students. In the today's session, we'll talk about uh, cognitive enhancers. Uh, cognitive enhancers are the drugs that improve memory and cognition. Now here cognition refers to the ability to think, plan, judge and make decisions. Now cognitive enhancers are also called as cerebroactive drugs and they are also called as smart drugs as they enhance mental performance. And thus uh, cognitive enhancers enhance cognitive functions including concentration, learning, memory and mood. And these drugs, uh, they bring about improvement in thinking, planning, judgment and decision making. Now, even though the therapeutic benefits of uh, these cognitive enhancers are limited, uh, indications of cognitive enhancers are, uh, first indication is Alzheimer's disease. Uh, as we all know, it is a neurodegenerative disease and it is the most common cause of uh, dementia. Uh, then the second indication for cognitive enhancers is a mild cognitive impairment. It is characterized by symptoms commonly observed in elderly like uh, dizziness and uh, memory lapses. Then an another very important indication of uh, cognitive enhancers is the attention deficit hyperactivity uh, disorder. And this is characterized by inattentiveness, inability to concentrate restlessness, hyperactivity, inability to complete task, impulsivity. Uh, then another important indication of uh, uh, cognitive enhancers is the transient ischemic attack uh, that is the cerebrovascular ischemia which is associated with impairment of memory and cognition. Uh, cerebrovascular accidents associated with impairment of uh, memory and uh, cognition. Then stroke and vascular dementia uh, that is a multi uh, infarct dementia, dementia which is caused due to the stroke and due to the infarction that is the death of the neurons. Uh, then another indication is organic psychosyndromes. Uh, these are the organic brain disorders uh, that involve impairment of memory and intellect. Then sequela of head injury. Uh, that is impairment of memory and cognition as a consequence of previous disease or injury. Another indication is electroconvulsive uh, therapy which uh, results in impairment of memory and cognition. Uh, as we all know electroconvulsive therapy is a treatment where seizures are electrically induced in patients uh, to provide relief from convulsions. Another indication is a brain surgery because brain surgery is also found to be associated with impairment of memory and cognition. Now let's talk about cholinergic and glutamate neurotransmissions uh, that are essential for the processing of memory and learning. Now as the slide shows uh, here that cholinergic neurotransmission are very essential for the processing of memory and learning. On the other hand, neurotransmission via NMDA glutamate receptors is required for synaptic plasticity and survival of neurons. Now synaptic plasticity as we all know that minute to minute changes are continuously happening between neurons. And these changes in neuronal connections are required for memory and learning which is termed as synaptic plasticity. And this synaptic plasticity and survival of neurons is mediated by NMDA receptor glutamate activity and thus uh, this neurotransmission via NMDA glutamate receptors is essential for the processing of memory and learning. Now let's see what happens during impairment of memory and cognition. Uh, there is fall in the acetylcholine levels in the brain. There is fall in the cholinergic neurotransmission and this fall in the cholinergic neurotransmission is responsible for the impairment of memory and cognition. And therefore, those drugs that activate the cholinergic neurotransmission, that is cholinergic enhancers or the cholinergic activators, they are very important cognit cognitive enhancers. Now, uh, on the other hand, as we have already discussed, uh, the role of uh, glutamate in the processing of memory and learning. Here we can see that excessive NMDA receptor activity causes excitotoxicity, it causes hyper excitability of neurons uh, which results in excitotoxicity and neuronal death. 
uh, this is due to excessive NMDA receptor activity and this neuronal death is responsible for impairment of memory and cognition. Now uh, therefore these NMDA receptor antagonists they are also uh, very useful cognitive enhancers. Now let's talk about the classification of cognitive enhancers. This slide talks about the classification of uh, cognitive enhancers. Now research is at uh, preliminary stage as of uh, 2020 and the effect of majority of these drugs are not fully understood. Now first category of drug is the cholinergic activators. Now as we have already discussed that uh, cholinergic uh, transmission uh, is very essential for the memory and learning and uh, there is found to be fall in the levels of acetylcholine uh, which results in impairment of memory and cognition. So these uh, cholinergic activators they are very useful cognitive enhancers for example we have rivastigmine, donipazole, galantamine. Another category of drugs are the glutamate antagonist uh, for example mementine and uh, then the miscellaneous cerebrovascular drugs uh, these drugs they exhibit different mechanism of actions for example piracetam, pyritinol, dihydroergotoxine, cetylcholine, ginkgo biloba. Now we will talk about the pharmacology of these uh, cognitive enhancers. Now this slide talks about the pharmacology of uh, cholinergic activators. Now before discussing the pharmacology of cholinergic activator, let's, let's first talk about the cholinergic neurotransmission. Now this is a cholinergic neuron, acetylcholine is stored in the synaptic vesicle. As soon as the action potential reaches this cholinergic neuron, this cholinergic neuron is depolarized and there is release of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. Now this acetylcholine binds to its receptors and produces a pharmacological action. After that, this acetylcholine it is metabolized by the enzyme acetylcholine asterase into choline and acetate. That means this enzyme that is the acetylcholine asterase is responsible for the metabolism of acetylcholine. Now as we all know that acetylcholine or cholinergic uh, neurotransmission is essential for the processing of memory and learning and there is deficiency of acetylcholine. Uh, during impairment of memory and cognition these cholinergic activators they inhibit the enzyme they inhibit the enzyme acetylcholine asterase and therefore these uh, cholin uh, these uh, drugs they are also termed as anticholine asterases these are termed as anticholine asterases because they inhibit the enzyme acetylcholine asterase thereby inhibiting the metabolism of acetylcholine and increasing the availability of acetylcholine at the synaptic uh, cleft. So these cholinergic activators these are the cerebral anticholine asterases they inhibit the enzyme acetylcholine asterase. Examples are uh, rivastigmine, donipazole, galentamine uh, these drugs are predominant uh, they produce predominant inhibition of cerebral uh, acetylcholine asterase enzyme. There is greater augmentation of uh, cholinergic transmission in the brain. However, one uh, important thing to be noted uh, over here is this that improvement in dementia is limiting, is very limited and it is short lasting. And uh, these drugs produce mild peripheral cholinergic side effects. Now next uh, uh, is the pharmacology of glutamate antagonist. Now as we have already discussed uh, glutamate uh, neurotransmission mediated by NMDA receptors is responsible for the processing of memory and learning. However excess glutamate uh, results in the um, excess glutamate uh, neurotransmission results in the death of the neurons and which is responsible for the impairment of memory and cognition. Now this is a glutaminergic neuron. Now when it is depolarized there is release of uh, glutamate. Now uh, what happens during impairment of memory and cognition is this that there is increased availability of glutamate. There is increased availability of glutamate at the synaptic cleft. 
Now how this happens uh, we can uh, see over here. Uh, there is reduced uptake of uh, there is reduced uptake of glutamate in the glial cell and there is more transportation of glutamate in the glutaminergic neuron from the glial cell. So on one hand there is reduced uptake of glutamate on the other hand there is increased transportation of glutamate in the glutaminergic neuron and this results in the increased availability of glutamate at the synaptic cleft and this increased levels of glutamate at the synaptic clefts they bind to the NMDA receptor and there is excessive influx of calcium because of the increased availability of glutamate there is increased there is increased influx of calcium and this increased influx of calcium uh, increased influx of calcium results in the neuronal death so uh, glutamate antagonist uh, they bind to the NMDA receptors and they inhibit this, this uh, excessive calcium influx and therefore uh, they are found to uh, bring improvement in the memory and cognition and therefore they are useful as uh, cognitive enhancers. So glutamate NMDA receptor antagonist example is the uh, mementine. Now this drug it reduces the glutamate transmission and thereby uh, bringing about improvement in learning and memory. However, again improvement in dementia is limited and short lasting. However, uh, mementine that is a glutamate NMDA receptor antagonist is better tolerated than anticholinasterases. Now we will talk about the pharmacology of miscellaneous cerebroactive drugs. Now these are the drugs that exhibit uh, different mechanism of actions. Uh, the first and the most important is epiracetam. It selectively improves efficacy of higher telencephalic integrative activities. Now, uh, piracetam is also termed as a nootropic. It's a very important drug. It acts by modulating cholinergic and glutaminergic neurotransmission within the required range. That means it produces a balance of uh, cholinergic neurotransmission and it also produces a balance of uh, glutaminergic neurotransmission in the brain. And thus it improves both memory as well as cognition. And hence it is termed as a nootropic. And uh, it is a neuroprotective. It improves uh, plasticity. And uh, uh, it, uh, it, is also, uh, it improves memory and cognition without producing serious side effects. Uh, and thus because of these reasons it is termed as a nootropic. Uh, it produces few mild and transient side effects like gastric discomfort, nervousness, insomnia, dizziness and skin rashes. Another important drug is uh, pyretinol. It increases glucose transport across the blood brain barrier. Uh, it improves the blood flow in ischemic uh, brain area and uh, therapeutic benefit of this drug is uncertain. It produces mild GI upset, skin rashes, itching and taste disturbance. Another miscellaneous drug is the dihydroergotoxine. It uh, also increases uh, cerebral blood flow selectively. It improves brain metabolism thereby improving the memory and cognition. However, therapeutic value of this drug is not uh, established and it produces flushing, headache, GI disturbances. Uh, another drug is a Ginkgo Biloba. It is a platelet activating factor, uh, antagonistic action. It exhibits platelet activating factor, antagonistic action. Uh, that means it prevents the aggregate, aggregation of platelets and since it prevents the aggregation of platelets it inhibits the formation of thrombus and thereby preventing the cerebral ischemia. So Ginkgo biloba prevent development of cerebral thrombosis and infarct however it shows uh, inconsistent results and it produces mild GI GIT symptoms like uh, GIT symptoms and it also increases the risk of bleeding. So this is all about the pharmacology of uh, cognitive enhancers. Uh, thanks for watching the video.